Mercy Corps. Uh, it's an international NGO. And uh, now I'm with the program ACERN, which is Asian Cities Climate Change Resilience Network. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ASEAN programs uh, was launched in 2008. The financial support of this program is provided by the Rockefeller Foundation. Yeah, uh, this program has a purpose, or the goal is to increase climate change resilience of the city. And then uh, it is a network of 10 cities in uh, four countries which is Vietnam, India, Thailand, and Indonesia. And the purpose of this uh, climate change resilience uh, network program is mostly uh, the target uh, for the uh, poor and vulnerable community. Indonesia, uh, it also has its specific goal, which is to catalyze attention, funding, and action around climate necessary to build resilience of poor and vulnerable Indonesian urban communities. In Indonesia, uh, it has around 240 million uh, population, where almost half of it, about 42 percent of these people are clustered between two up to one dollar income per day uh, poverty lines and uh, as you know uh, the poor and vulnerable community is the weakest one to deal well, able to deal with the climate change impact and climate change has caused uh, a disaster which usually happened in the country um, the impact become even more severe and in Indonesia uh, we have like uh, you know it's like the you can say the ring of fire where the earthquake mostly happened and we are uh, have like around 17,500 islands uh, so the impact of climate change such as sea level rise will really impact because mostly of these people about like 42 uh, million people uh, they live in the coastal area where there is uh, the urban area which are really densely populated and it's placed <coughs> uh, less than 10 meters under sea level uh, level. Yeah. And then, uh, for example, in Jakarta, uh, usually uh, every five years we have like the big floods and in 2007, the floods become even more severe, like 70, uh, 57 people were killed, about 422,300 uh, people have to leave their home, but like 1,500 uh, houses were destroyed because of this flood, which like uh, the years before, the impact was not so big. And uh, it's not only flood, it's like uh, the unpredicted storm become even more severe. So uh, the uh, people who go to the sea, um, the fishermen, they are afraid to go to the sea because it's very unpredictable. And there's like a weird phenomenon also happen. Like uh, there is no fish at the sea. They don't know why. And it's like uh, it's become and this impact of climate change really impacted to uh, Indonesia. So ESEN, I uh, want to uh, want to uh, uh, help Indonesia to uh, the city, especially to become uh, even more resilient to climate change impact. And uh, in Indonesia, uh, we work in Bandar Lampung and Semarang City, where uh, in 2009, uh, actually uh, there's already like uh, more than two cities interested uh, for this program, but there are some criteria that have they have to be put to be in part of this program, such as their commitment, 
and their their uh, experience related to the funding from the internationals and other criteria. And uh, in these two cities, we have like uh, we uh, make vulnerability assessment, where it's assessed uh, the the vulnerability area uh, sectors in the cities. And after the vulnerability assessment, they have the city resilience strategies where they make the prioritations of the sectors they want to deal with, which is like have the biggest impact of the climate change. And from these situation strategies, the intervention projects are implemented in the cities. And now uh, there are already around uh, five cities want to replicate it, and uh, since 2011, so already <coughs> one city already like once uh, already committed to replicate as a program, which is Bitar City. And uh, at the city level, uh, the interventions, it includes uh, different, uh, I mean, the multi-stakeholders. It involves uh, the city governments, it involves universities, it involves the local NGOs. So we have like three different stakeholders at the city level. And uh, at the first uh, windows of our intervention project, where in Bandar Lampung City, we have integrated solid waste management. And in Samarang City, we have a rainwater harvesting project. We are learning that uh, the involvement of the multiple stakeholders within uh, just one intervention project, it's quite challenging. And, uh, and we use the learning that we got from the first in windows of intervention project to improve the second window of our intervention project. Where in Bandar Lampung City, we have a biopro project, we have education project. In Semarang City, we have the flood early warning system projects. And uh, this multi-stakeholders uh, actually, if we look at the uh, the framework of ACER, they are uh, different level, and each of the, uh, stakeholders at this different level have different interests. Uh, start from the impact level, where there is a donor. Uh, it's interested in the result, the system wide result. At the outcome level, we have the country coordinator, which is Mercy Corps. It's interested in the city-wide capacity. In the output level, we have the city team at the city level by Lampung and Sumara, where we have the city government, local NGO universities. They want the city resilience. And uh, at the intervention project, at, uh, or at the activities level, at each city, uh, there is the local NGO and universities, and they want uh, the local projects. And all of these uh, stakeholders with at a different level and have different interests, it has uh, makes uh, the intervention project becomes quite challenging. And uh, there is a <coughs> challenge uh, in the uh, its coordination challenges in uh, delineation of uh, role and responsibilities and also the commitments. And. Uh, we know that uh, this, all of these challenges will, will be uh, easier to tackle if we have the better monitoring and evaluation in place. But uh, in the first windows of intervention project, we uh, found that uh, the monitoring and system in place was there are still uh, challenges to implement it. Where uh, there's like an equal importance placed on the failure of monitoring evaluation across stakeholders. So, especially for at the activities level, the project implementer unit, where it has local NGO and universities involvement, um, not all the stakeholders in here they uh, really implemented the monitoring evaluation and uh, really understand the importance of it. I mean, like uh, whether or not they will use it to. Uh, improve the project. And then 
it's like uh, another challenge is, is the lack of consensus of important terminology where like when uh, just for example when they say the outcomes when I mean another stakeholders can uh, say the same things with a different terms and when they don't have the same understanding and they hesitate that actually it means the same in the discussion it can lead to like a great debate and when we talk about outcome other people talk about output so it's become uh, quite confusing and then uh, these stakeholders which like they work in one intervention project they using like different approach for ME so uh, the each of stakeholders was like uh, they hesitate to agree on others uh, other stakeholders who com uh, implemented their ME, whether or not it is the best uh, method for the ME. Well, they are think they are the best, so it's like no coordinated one. And also the asymmetry interest for each ME project, where we can see uh, just from one uh, single intervention project, in each level, they want uh, different outcomes. And just in one single intervention project, it can, I mean, like, it's not able to accommodate all the interests. For example, like, in the city team, it's what resilience. In uh, country coordinator, they want to see city-wide capacity. And at the donor level, it's want to see the results. So it's like, uh, it's difficult to accommodate all of uh, these interests, and it will need each result framework for them but it's like we have problem in the capacity and resources in the uh, implementers level and also uh, for the each of the projects uh, since like the level awareness of M&E is it's like in a different level so they only put uh, not enough funding for their M&E well, uh, there's like argument, not argument on, oh, you have to put more funding, it's so, yeah, but uh, what happened is they only put the, uh, not, I mean, the limited funding for uh, monetary information. So, um, after we are uh, evaluate what happened in our uh, first intervention project, we have a uh, like range of discussions with, uh, our country partners, uh, like Arup, and we also make a lot of discussion <laughs> with another team member and uh, to find out the best strategies uh, to tackle the problems on the different stakeholders' involvement in the adaptation projects. So, uh, after a lot of discussion, finally we got to our strategies, which is the first one we uh, implement the socialization on the importance of ME. It is implemented through like discussion, formal informal, workshop, and trainings. So we are like uh, invited them to come together and sit and talk, and we invite them why we need the ME, and uh, we ask about their experience, what they have in their own organization. So, yeah. After we have the socialization on the importance of ME, uh, we uh, ask them to agree on having the coordination on ME uh, in one class in every intervention project because, like, uh, by having one that we are agree, it will be more effective for the intervention project itself. And, and we also uh, ask them to align it with the political interest at the city level. At the city level, the climate change issue is also quite new and they start to uh, become even more understanding on climate change because of uh, ASEAN program. And so uh, they're already mainstreaming uh, activities going on at the city level. So all of this, uh, intervention projects should relate it to this uh, mainstreaming advocacy at the government so it should be like in line with, with it so we get support from the mayor and other stakeholders at the city level 
And then we develop uh, user-friendly <coughs> tools we, where we collaborate with our country partners to make uh, the effective, usable one. Uh, and uh, this is quite challenging to simplify all the MME tools. Well, if we want to have the perfect ideal one, it uh, will be difficult because it's such a short time with like they have different background, different understanding of, I mean, it will be difficult for them to understand if they have different capacities. So like uh, we decided to make one simplified one, smart one. Yeah, I know, I mean, I'm sure you all, all know about what is smart. Uh, yeah, they have this, uh, should be like smart, simple, uh, so it's usable for everyone and um, after we already have the smart tools in order for them to really implement it we ask them to formalize it in the contract so like for example uh, put it in the payment method so they are like have to fulfill everything uh, so they will really focus on implementing the monetary information and uh, by having these strategies implemented that are ongoing now for our second windows of the uh, intervention project, uh, we hope that uh, the project itself can improve their implementation. They can tackle the problem within the coordination and like the donation of program responsibilities and also commitment. They can keep uh, track on the uh, what happened on the process, if there's the risk of failure, if there's the best practice, and they can like reflect back, find the weaknesses, and improve their intervention project implementation. So, uh, what we uh, learn from all of this process is like uh, apparently there's a different interest at a different level, and yeah, we need to, and it should be accommodated. And we need uh, useful and usable MNE tools for multi-stakeholder project. And related to different interests at different level, then there should be like some trade-off made at different levels. So all the tools can be applicable and usable for the intervention project implemented, while it still can contribute to the interest. And a strong coordinated MNE system or multi-stakeholder project, it will uh, really support the intervention project implementation process. And uh, all of this process should be like accountable. And this accountable MNE system, it's uh, allowed another stakeholders at the city level uh, to learn from, from it. And when uh, they are asked to implement the next projects, they already able to do it in a better way.